can, can legally bear arms to address this situation. The Black Riders Liberation calls for immediate end to police brutality and the murder of black people. We're not asking for shit. We're going to make sure it happens. If we see them in our community harassing and sweating us, we're going to sweat their ass. If they touch us, we're going to touch their ass. And whatever they do, it's going to be a reciprocal response. And that's how it needs to be from every community across the world. Every 36 hours, a black man, woman, and child is murdered by the police department. You can't escape the statistics. A good cop makes his quota, and he makes his quota taking black people or brown people or red people to jail. 76% of the prison population are black and Hispanic males. And that percentage, 65% is black. If you ever been the whole tank in your life, you know the ratio of black people to anything else is going to be higher. And that's in any jail ever in, in the United States. You can go to a hick city right now, and I guarantee you there'll be more black people in that whole tank. We want action. We want murderers that are murdering our family to be prosecuted like any civilian. So just understand that this is just a taste of what the city has in store for them if we don't get that. <laughs> My brother, when he was murdered by the Vallejo police, he was doing like many of us do. He was sitting in, in his car in front of his house when he was attacked. Um, it was around four in the morning. He was dropping my brother-in-law off. And in the split second from a phone call being made for the door to be opened, police came, pulled up, shined a, a light into his car and attacked. And in the midst of them shooting, they said, put your hands up, but they were already shooting. And um, there was no time for them to know who he was. There was no time for them to assess the situation or anything. It was just an, an attack. And they hopped out of their cars, guns blazing. They didn't care about what they were doing. It was like they were on a hunt for blood. They were on a hunt to kill. Around four in the morning, uh, my sister was yelling from the other room, you know, telling me that the police was outside shooting Miki, which we call Mario Miki. That's our nickname to him. Um, so I heard the gunshots first before she even started yelling. And um, I pulled the children off the bed because it sounded like they were coming in the house. And then I heard her yelling that the police were outside shooting Miki. And so I ran to the I ran to the window, and when I got to the window, um, the officer, the officer, he, um, he, sorry, he unloaded, he unloaded his clip, and well, he dropped one clip, and it's like he was re, um, reloading his gun, and I was banging on the window, banging on the window, and then he got on top of the car, and. Um, start aiming it inside of the window and he might have he shot off a few shots and finally I got the window up and was yelling you know then you got the wrong people you know pretty much like they, you got the wrong people and pretty much while he's on top of the hood he's shooting and talking to me like um, what the quote what the fuck am I supposed to do? And and he continued to shoot into his clip was gone. And um, he got off the car, and I started yelling to my little sister to call 911 because he was just standing there. And um, a second one came from out the came from out the darkness and was like, "Should I open the door?" Which to my to my brother's car. And, um, and the other officer that was on top of the hood shooting, he's like, no, not yet. So a few seconds later, they start taking him out of the car and they hog tied him and all the extras. And I went to go, by then I think some other officers arrived and I ran out the door after I put my clothes on. And um, I was greeted by another officer with a gun in my face. He had it on my on my nose and told me, 
get your motherfucking ass back in the house before I shoot you in your face. As soon as I arrived on the scene, um, officers of the Vallejo Police Department and other agencies, Maritime Academy, Napa Police, um, they were dressed like, like they were ready for combat. I felt like I was walking into, um, you know, like, like I had the Taliban in front of me. As soon as we walked up, they had their guns drawn, aiming, and, aiming them at us and wouldn't tell us anything. And they told us to move back or they were going to shoot us. So it was just, it was hostile from the time that we got there. We were trying to uh, get answers and they were just really mean. They were really brutal. And it was, you know, like we were in a third world country. It was not America that night. Well, I got off of the porch, and he came from, like, nowhere with his gun, like, in, in, between my, in between my face right here. He had the gun on my face and told me that if I don't get my ass back in the house, that he was going to shoot me in my m and for face, which I kind of, like, don't even know how I got back in the house. One of the kids told me, well, one of the twins, um, Two of my other sisters that were there told me that one of them pulled me back in. And then I just remember him kicking the screen in my face. And um, so in between time, um, more officers came and they start having the house with guns and lights on, on us. Gun, like the whole house they had, like it was like guns all around the house. Anywhere I walked around the house with the, you know, with the blinds open, they had a gun on me with a light on it. Um, they told us we couldn't leave the house. They told us could nobody come in the house. So finally, maybe like four or five hours later, they were told us. I told them because I was I was almost five months pregnant with my daughter. Um, I told them I said, you know, if I have a miscarriage, this is on your, you know, this is on you guys. And he was like, oh, nobody ever told you you couldn't leave the house, you know? So. Could you, um, not to stop you, could you um, tell me a little bit about how, like, the police treated you and your family after that night? For one, they murdered my brother, you know? For two, they made it seem like, like, we did something inside my home after they killed him. And um, they had originally told the neighbors that, um, that it was a drive-by, you know? So it's kind of like they were lying from the beginning. It's so sad that the, that the people who kill your loved one get to kill them a second time in the media. You know, they get to lie. They get to, you know, assassinate their character after they assassinated them, you know. They get to have control. They get to make lies. And, you know, you have, you know, reporters and journalists who don't do their research and they, you know, readily publish things that are not true. So when they murdered my brother, they said, oh, he was a parolee who was afraid of going back to prison, although he had never been to prison and was, wasn't even on parole. So, you know, um, they did whatever they could to make it seem like he was a monster so that they can lie and trick the community into thinking that they did them a favor when in actuality they murdered an unarmed man. Those are the young man who died, 23-year-old Mario Ramiro, gathered to remember him near the shooting scene. They questioned why police opened fire, but Vallejo police say the two officers involved in this shooting feared for their lives. Everything started early on Sunday morning when two officers tried to question the two men sitting in a white car on Pepper Drive. They shined a spotlight into the car. Police say Ramiro at that point, who's on, a man who's on parole for a weapons violation, grabbed what they thought was a real handgun, turned out to be a pellet gun, and then turned toward the officers. The victim's sister told us she witnessed the shooting. This is Mario Ramiro's car, and this is patrol car 172. This is the original position of the officers when they fired, not the staged <laughs> scene that they had for the media. Yeah. So that's the back of the police car, right? Yeah, that's the back of it. They pulled right up. You see the light shining on the window? That's from this patrol car. Right. This is the passenger side door. 
in the photos that you guys see on the news in the newspaper, this patrol car is not in it anymore. Now there's a patrol car on the driver's side, like the, like my brother got out of the car, which he never got out of the car. So. We're not putting guns. We're not jumping out of bushes, putting guns to kids' heads. We're not jumping out of cars, putting guns to heads to mothers with their children in the car. We're not doing that. None of that. They want to label us as, as we're the bad ones. We're the bad ones, but they come with their cameras. They got body cameras and it's an option if they get to wear it or not. You know, they get to hide their names. They get to be concealed after they murder all loved ones so they can sit amongst us and act like they're one of us. Okay? It's not fair. It's not fair. Could you um, tell me a little bit about Mario, the type of person he was, the kind of, kind of character he was, the personality? Mario was a, was a family man. You know what I mean? He did everything for him with his family. You know, he had his little rap thing going. He was inspiring to be a rap artist. Mm -hmm. uh, had jobs, doing little part-time jobs here and there. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has a little past, but Mario was on the right path, right track of getting his life together. Right. You know I mean? Right, so basically, you know, like when this when this first happened, I recall, you know, because I'm from Vallejo, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, when I, I recall, like the media was trying to like slander slander him, I guess, basically say he was part of a gang. Do you know anything about that? Like, is that true or that you know is that this? I mean, my thing is like this. That's that's what the first thing the police want to do is put you involved in some type of criminal activity, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I grew up in South Vallejo because I hung with everybody from my neighborhood. Do that mean we a gang? Right. You know what I mean? Now, in Mario Point, they tried to say he was in the Loafers gang. Mario's not even from Loafers. Mario's from South Vallejo. Right. You know, so that right there was the beginning of the slander they came with. Mm -hmm. Okay, after that, they tried to say he was on parole. Mario was never on parole. You know what I mean? Mario so, was on no type of paperwork at all. Wow. If you could speak to those officers that was there that night, when uh, Mario was killed, what would you say to him? Why? You know, Mario, what did Mario do to you to deserve that? You know? Uh, nobody deserves to die like that. Those 30 shots fired at you. Tell us a little bit about your brother. Well, my brother, he was fun loving, compassionate, he was very affectionate. He was probably the most affectionate one out of all of us. You know, he made sure he he let you know that he loved you, you know, gave you a hug and a kiss, you know, when when he was leaving. Uh, he met no strangers, you know, all of his friends, he brought them in and they were a part of our family, you know. Uh, so, you know, he was the type of person that if he got, he wanted to make sure that everybody got. So, you know, if he, if he received something, he wanted to make sure that he, he spread the love, you know. So, you know, he was very thoughtful, very caring. Stuff y'all used to do with Mario. Uh, watch movies and cook. I love Alice. Um, we used to play video games, especially Black Ops Zombies. Black Ops Zombies. Yeah. What's some of the What's some of the stuff that you would say that Mario like was trying to teach you as far as being a young man and you know things like that? Um, don't let people bring you down. Don't let people bring you down. What about you? Um. That uh, when people people try to try people try to mess up your day, don't don't let them try don't let them uh, mess up your day. Just keep going. So, what um, what's one of the funnest like the funnest times you ever had with Mario that you remember like that you think about all the time? When we had the big old water slide at uh, we had a big slide at at the old house, and it, it was like. We had all went up there. He pushed us all down. It was like a big old water shower. What about you? Like the funnest time that you always think about when you like think about the good times, the stuff that y'all did was fun. His graduation. His graduation. Well, okay. What was what was so cool about it? Um, there was a lot of people, and um. Start one at a time. Like if you could, if you could say one thing to him right now, what would you say? Stop kissing me. Miss him? Yeah. You tell him you miss him a lot. What about you? If you could say one thing to Mario right now, if he hear you, what would you say? 
Oh, so yeah, I miss him. Yeah. Hope he's in a better place. If you could talk to the actual officers that were there that night, what would you ask them or what would you say to them? I would say, how could you? How could you? How could you just murder somebody unjustly? How, how could you, you know? I, I would say my main question would be how could you, you know? How would you feel if somebody came and murdered your loved one unjustly? And not only murdered them, assassinated their character, you know? Not, how, how would you feel if the, the murderers that murdered your loved one murdered your loved one Cut him out, cut him out of his seatbelt, drug him out of the car, had his body stolen. How how would you feel? How would you feel if if somebody murdered your loved one and then their colleagues came and changed the crime scene? How would you feel? You know, how how would you feel if the person that murdered your loved one didn't have any integrity and no, and his his department didn't have any any integrity? How would you feel? You know, how would you like to be? continuously hurt you know not only your loved one murdered but then their then their character assassinated and there's nobody nobody with any kind of integrity to stand up and say hey this is wrong how would you feel they they took him away from us and we can't have him back regardless of what your reasons your reasons is not good enough for me you know but I do feel that you know if if the if if the law is for the people, then why are you letting two people get away with something that's wrong? You can say one last thing to your brother tomorrow. What would you, what would you say? I talk to my brother every day. I, I say, boy. Cause I always said, boy, you know, it was, you know, we call him Mickey, but you know, whenever he called, we'd be like, what boy? You know that I'm a fight for you to the end. You know? I know you do the same for me. I would say, if I had to say anything, I would tell him that I love him. He was good at that. He would tell us all the time, sis, I love you. And, and we wouldn't say it. The girls in our family kind of don't say it too much. But the boys always, I love you, sis. And I would tell him that I love him when I miss him. And I'm sorry what they did to him, you know?